We have three pages, which gives us a lot of information. He's selling himself as a brilliant businessman. I'm really a good businessman. I'm so good at business. Oh. This guy lost almost a billion dollars in one year. That doesn't sound particularly brilliant to me. How do you lose $915 million in a rising real estate market if you're the great real estate genius? Donald Trump could have avoided paying a dime of federal income taxes for 18 years. Most and Americans course, pay federal income taxes. Donald Trump apparently no, did not. That makes if me smart. Paid, Does that mean the rest of us are stupid? I'm worth billions. I'm a successful businessman. But I don't pay any taxes. But you, you make 15 bucks an hour, you pay the taxes, not me. It certainly puts a new tack on makers versus takers, doesn't it? I gotta use some Tic Tacs just in case I start kissing her. You know, I'm automatically attracted to beautiful. I just start kissing them. It's like a magnet. You just kiss. I don't even wait. And when you're a star, they let you do it. You can do anything. There has to be some form of punishment. For the woman? Yeah, there has to be some form. He shook his finger at me and he screamed, You're disgusting. And he ran out of there. I really think it's a, a bad idea to put your wife working for you. I don't want my wife shouting at somebody like that. A softness disappeared. She became an executive, not a wife. If you become president, will a woman make the same as a man? You're going to make the same if you do as good a job. That ugly face of yours. That's right. Huh? Roe versus Wade consigned to the ash heap of history where it belongs. Then I have days where if I come home, dinner's not ready, I go through the roof. I did try and f*** her. She was married. It must be a right. pretty picture you dropped in. John and Dennis. I just don't respect her as a journalist. Pregnancy is a wonderful thing for the husband. It's certainly an inconvenience for a business. The look obviously matters. Like you wouldn't have your job if you weren't beautiful. It's very I moved sad. in her like a bitch, but I couldn't get there. And she was married. Big phony bitch. And she's totally changed her Mr. Look. Trump, women are going to be the reason you're not elected to be president. We have a candidate for president who over the course of his lifetime and the course of this campaign has said things about women that are so shocking that I simply will not repeat anything here today. It has shaken me to my core in a way that I couldn't have predicted. This was a powerful individual speaking freely and openly about sexually predatory behavior and actually bragging about kissing and groping women using language so obscene that many of us were worried about our children hearing it when we turn on the TV. It now seems very clear that this isn't an isolated incident. It's one of countless examples of how he has treated women his whole life. And I feel it so personally. The shameful comments about our body, the disrespect of our ambitions and intellect, the belief that you can do anything you want to a woman, it is cruel. It's frightening. And the truth is, it hurts. If we let Hillary's opponent win this election, then we are sending a clear message to our kids that everything they're seeing and hearing is perfectly okay. We are validating it. We are endorsing it. The fact is that Hillary embodies so many of the values that we try so hard to teach our young people. Advocating for kids with disabilities, fighting for children's health care as first lady, affordable child care in the Senate. Hillary has been a lawyer, a law professor, First Lady of Arkansas, First Lady of the United States, a U.S. Senator, Secretary of State, and she has been successful in every role, gaining more experience than any candidate in our lifetime. More than Barack, more than Bill, and yes, she happens to be a woman. She is an outstanding mother. She is a loving, loyal wife. She's a devoted daughter who cared for her mother until her final days. And if any of us had raised a daughter like Hillary Clinton, we would be so proud. We would be proud. Either Hillary Clinton or her opponent will be elected president. And if you vote for someone other than Hillary, or if you don't vote at all, then you are helping to elect her opponent. We simply cannot let that happen. This is not politics as usual. We as women, we as Americans, 
we as decent human beings can come together to stand up and say enough is enough. This was me in 1964. I was in the Daisy ad, which was a political commercial. The fear of nuclear war that we had as children, I never thought our children would ever have to deal with that again. And to see that coming forward in this election is really scary. A foreign policy expert went to advise Donald Trump, and three times he asked about the use of nuclear weapons. If we have them, why can't we use them? I want to be unpredictable. Wouldn't you rather, in a certain sense, have Japan have nuclear weapons? Saudi Arabia we nuclear have weapons? Weapon. Saudi Arabia, absolutely. What safeguards are there to stop any president who may not be stable from launching a nuclear attack? The commander-in-chief is the commander-in-chief. Bomb the s*** out of him. Vote for Hillary Clinton on November 8th. The stakes are too high for you to stay home. Imagine a candidate for president of the United States with suspicious and undisclosed ties to a foreign country. Imagine that foreign country was running a campaign to influence the results of the American election. It sounds like the rejected plot of a bad 1980s Cold War movie, but it might actually be true. We know that Russia is trying to meddle in our election. The Department of Homeland Security and the Director of National Intelligence are confident that the Russian government directed recent hacks with the intention of interfering with our election process. Donald Trump was reportedly briefed on Russia's efforts in mid-August, but has continued to deflect blame from Russia by trying to blame China or even a 400-pound hacker. Maybe there is no hacking. It could also be China. It also could be somebody sitting on their bed that weighs 400 pounds, okay? Russia has been propping up far-right parties in countries across Europe. Golden Dawn in Greece, AFD in Germany, Marine Le Pen's National Front in France. They're xenophobic, nationalist, anti-immigrant, anti-Muslim, and they want to weaken the European Union. Russia has also been connected to the use of politically motivated hacks and strategic leaks as weapons of cyber warfare. So why would Russia and Putin have an interest in seeing Donald Trump win the election in November? It's because it's frightening how closely the foreign policy of Trump aligns with Putin's preferences, and concerning enough that the former acting director of the CIA said that Putin had recruited Trump as, quote, an unwitting agent of the Russian Federation. Russia's number one foreign policy goal is to weaken the European Union and NATO. Trump's called NATO obsolete. I think NATO may be obsolete. And suggested he wouldn't defend our NATO allies unless they pay up. They gotta pay. Trump's even called for removing American troops stationed at our bases overseas, undermining our ability to stand up to Putin. Trump denied Russia was in Ukraine. He's not gonna go into Ukraine. Asserted that the people of Crimea prefer to be under Russian control. The people of Crimea, from what I've heard, would rather be with Russia. None of those are true, but they are the very same talking points that Vladimir Putin has used. Trump has expressed a willingness to lift the sanctions imposed on Russia for invading and occupying Crimea and eastern Ukraine, and said he, quote, would be looking at recognizing Russia's annexation of Crimea. And during the Republican National Convention, Trump's campaign staffers worked behind the scenes to make sure the party's platform weakened its stance on Russian intervention. Trump has surrounded himself with foreign policy advisors connected to Putin and Russia. Yes, the campaign chairman who appears to have received secret millions from the pro-Kremlin dictator resigned, but that's far from the end of the story. U.S. intelligence is reportedly investigating a Trump foreign policy advisor's alleged meetings with senior Russian officials. A former campaign advisor's PR firm was hired to help improve Putin's image in the United States. And then there's Michael Flynn. When Trump received his first classified intelligence briefing, it was Flynn who he brought in the room with him. Flynn has defended Russian intervention in Syria, where their airstrikes have killed more than a thousand civilians. Flynn has praised Russia's influence in Europe and regularly appears on the Kremlin-backed propaganda outlet Russia Today. And how many former top spies in the U.S. military would surprise everyone by showing up at a black tie gala in Moscow where Putin was the marquee speaker? The other half of the equation is that we have no idea how deep Donald Trump's financial interests and ties to Russia really go. Trump has a long history of engaging in Russia-related business deals. Over the years, he's tried numerous times to build a Trump Tower in Russia and has made deals with powerful Russian interests, from paying the USSR to sponsor Soviet bikers to race in the Tour de Trump, to a deal with Putin's favorite mixed martial arts fighter. He even tried to sell Trump vodka to the Russians. In 2006, Trump's partners on a project in Panama traveled to Moscow to sell condos to Russian investors. In 2008, Trump sold a mansion in Palm Beach to a Russian oligarch for $95 million. 
that's $54 million more than what Trump had paid for it just four years earlier. Maybe that's why, as Donald Jr. said, Russians make up a pretty disproportionate cross-section of a lot of our assets. We see a lot of money pouring in from Russia. In 2013, Trump brought his Miss Universe pageant to Moscow. Trump bragged that almost all of the oligarchs were there. One in particular, Russian billionaire Arasa Galarov, paid Trump millions to bring the pageant to Russia. Before the trip was over, Trump and Agalarov reportedly signed a deal to explore future real estate opportunities in Russia. And there are other Trump business relationships that should raise questions. Trump partnered with a company called the Bayrock Group on Trump Soho. The Bayrock Group was founded by a former Soviet-era commerce official. Another Bayrock executive named Felix Sater was the person Trump asked to escort his children around Moscow on a trip in 2006. Trump then named Sater as senior advisor in 2010. Felix Sater, a twice convicted felon, once tied to organized crime and a massive stock scam. Another business partner on that Trump Soho project was the Sapir organization, whose founder Tamir Sapir was from the former Soviet Republic of Georgia and whose family Trump has called great friends. The Sapir organization has long been rumored to be connected to organized crime. So I want to put a fine point on this. We have here a presidential candidate with deep ties to Russia, who won't disclose anything about them, who consistently echoes Russian talking points, who appears on Russia's propaganda network, who hires staff with Russian ties, who has defended Putin's actions, who has exhibited little regard for democracy or human rights. Music to Putin's ears. No one should feel comfortable if we get to November without far better answers about how much Trump has invested in Russia and more importantly, how much Russia has invested in Trump. Because what we have right now is a Trump policy agenda that aligns far more closely with the interests of Vladimir Putin and Russia than the interests of the United States. Far from Trump's claim of America first, that's Russia first. And it's not someone who should be our next commander in chief.